So, um, it goes without saying you're a very well respected and well regarded member of the parish community. What would you recommend to invigorate the youth of our parish to ensure they stay engaged and committed to the faith? Number eight, is it? Yep, number seven. Okay. Um. Uh, if I could make quick the interrupt you. So the reason I'm asking this question is because this is my observation. I may be wrong. I find that there isn't a lot of youth involvement in our parish. I've been to a few other churches and I see a lot of youth uh, involvement on a regular basis. So I sometimes wonder why it is that we do not have the same level of enthusiasm at St. Mary's. Perhaps as um, an elder statesman, you can tell us why this is and what we can do to improve. Now I, um, it is often said that um, that with the St. Vincent of Paul Society, you're a wild goat. You're all old people there, um, and that um, may be accurate, may be true, but. Um, it may also be something that we we close our eye mm. uh, and we don't say to someone, well, come out with me. Mm. I need you to, uh, to help me lift Give me a hand here. Yeah. Um, I think I think maybe sometimes there's a lack of us showing yes um, people what we can do to um, help them, to have them help us. Yep. Um, so it's what you're saying is there's not a lot of awareness. Maybe that's why we don't see as much involvement. Yeah. Um, if you are referring to young people who do not come to this you know, parish? No, they they as, are parishioners, but they're not necessarily engaged in a lot mm, of youth activity. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think sometimes people like me, I'm an old guy, uh, miss out on saying to this fellow, I need some help mm -hmm. to take this food to, because we, we work in twos um, and um, you might be able to give me a hand, help me. Mm -hmm. um, same thing goes with the girls. Mm -hmm. Same with the girls, but um, I, th I and, think and yeah. it also uh, revolves around, or could revolve around their, their age group. Mm. When we say young people, are they young in the sense of um, uh, being too young? Uh, they've left school. But they're only sixteen. Mm. Uh, and mm. when I get involved yeah. in, mm. look, I, I would say you're never too young to get involved in your parish, in your local parish. Um, and I, I talk from experience because where I came from, um, from a very early age, we are encouraged to get involved in church activities. And uh, talking from experience, I know I was involved in the Legion of Mary, I was involved in the youth choir, we had um, Sunday school, etc, etc. So there was always something happening in the parish that kept the youth on their toes. So I don't know whether we are living in different times and it's because of all the distraction that's going on around 
us that not a lot of youth or young people um, yes. feel the need to get involved. Yes. Yes, they come to church and they go, but then that's where it ends. Mm. Anyway, we'll, that's, I, I guess that's food for thought. Maybe it's something that we can take offline and work on. I'm always... Um, Someone like you definitely um, can spearhead something. I'm always willing to um, accept views and ideas. I think that's that's very much part of our uh, should be very much part of our yeah, life. Yeah, and as a, a union representative of old, I'm sure <laughs> that's the way you are. You're always open to views and ideas. Mm. Yeah, that's wonderful. So that's something we definitely have to look into, Michael. Once lockdown is over, <laughs> would you say though the younger generation have a solid legacy in the Catholic Church to continue their faith journey? Well, in this in this parish, I don't see a problem with that. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's um, that's gives me hope. Gives us hope. That's really yeah. very inspiring to know. I think the problem <clears throat> lies too in <clears throat> their. Uh, if they leave, leave school, mm -hmm. the world opens up. Yeah. So that's the thing. I guess it's a different generation. So it's straight from school to university and then to a career. Whereas um, in the past it was not necessarily so. You finished school and you picked up a job if you could. Mm. But it was not... It may yeah. not include university too. Though. Yeah. You're doing other things, yeah. Um, but um, yes, but the demands have changed, obviously. But yeah, so. times have changed. But I still personally feel that, regardless of the times we live in, we still have to yes. I think for we, our um, faith. Yeah. No, it's, it's always worthwhile. It generates thoughts, thinking. Certainly, very keen to um, think through that. Thank you, Michael. That's great. Have you ever attended Latin class? Um, no. No. Okay. Well, ever. Of course, I was raised in the you know, when Latin masses were the uh, were the year were the norm you know, of the, the day. Only mass. Yes. Um, that was life then, but I've never. But attended. you've never been to one, okay? Have you heard of? Nor, the... nor do I want to. Ah, oh, okay. So this brings me to my next question. So, have you heard of the traditional Latin mass movement or the TLM? There's a lot of hype about this, and it's yes, I've it's heard sort of, of that. coming back. Yeah. Well, I hope it does a. Uh, uh, a quick circle and go back the other way. Okay. I'm not. I'm not at all um, interested in that. Okay. So that answers my uh, uh, question because I I was going to ask you if the Catholic Church were to revert to the Roman rite, would you then stop attending mass? I cannot see myself stopping attending a mm -hmm. mass, but I'd be very very disappointed if. Um, I was to um, do nothing but attend a mass where um, um, uh, the priest uh, says mass is back at, back to us, uh, and um, I, I just have no interest in that. Okay, all right. So that leaves that completes all of our spiritual questions. So just moving into a bit of general stuff now. What's the most interesting place you have visited, national and international? Italy. Oh, okay. That's nice. 
something that you can relate to Fabio. Where in Italy? Did you did you go right around Italy or just sort of... I've been to Italy a few times. Okay. Um, so what's the fascination with Italy that you've been there a few times? Well, I had uh, the opportunity uh, when I was with the young Christian workers in Australia to um, travel to uh, Italy mm -hmm. and um, went to some other um, countries in Europe at the time and I was very young then. Um, this was before you married? Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, um, So, so um, I, I have um, had the fortune to be in some other countries. In Europe? Uh, yeah, not only Europe. I would say that uh, the most interesting places uh, <clears throat> uh, would possibly be um, Pakistan mm. and uh, Sudan. Okay, so you've been, uh, been to both, Sudan and as um, well. uh, I um, were they recent visits. Sorry, were they recent visits? When did you go to Pakistan? Uh, Pakistan about three, four years ago. Okay, um, and, uh, and Sudan? four years ago, and uh, uh, Sudan a um, couple of years before okay. that. What What made you? visit those places were they specific to well I went to both of those countries in order to see what I could do okay. and um, it was to do with Catholicism or just something that well it, it was uh, um, yeah so it was religious based okay um, but um, um, Pakistan is uh, very different and um, yeah that would have been interesting because it's a predominantly Muslim country oh yes um, and uh, I uh, um, found that very um, very interesting indeed um so were you, were you there for long no um about two or three weeks okay. each of them um i'd go back to pakistan but my wife doesn't go much on that idea really okay so this is something don't don't that... print that there. <laughs> all right okay so are you are you a republican or monarchist uh, I found that interesting. I'm certainly not a monarchist. I would say I'm a Democrat. You're a Democrat. Okay. So you're happy with the way things are at the moment in Australia? You wouldn't want any change? Yeah, what do you mean in Australia? So at the moment we're not a republic, so we're still under the um, rule yeah. of the Queen. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a... Uh, well, personally, I'm a strong supporter of the Australian Labor Party. Thank you. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm a Republican by any means, and certainly Neither not a monarchist. monarchist. Thank you. That's fine. You're so, sort of somewhere in between. That's good enough for us. <laughs> Do you believe in climate change? There's a lot of hype about climate change, and there yes. are those who believe that oh, it's I am, happening, yes. those who believe that it's not. What are your what, No, what's your I, I believe that... Um, Climate change uh, is uh, is real. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if we look at Australia in the last uh, year uh, or less, um, the um, um, problems of within Australia of um, the. Uh, um, Droughts, mm -hmm. followed by bushfires. Bush yes, that's, uh, that's it changed. It changed the mind of people whom, who would have been, very very, 
strict in their views. Um, and who did not believe in climate change. Oh, no. no. And they were um, um, men and women who um, uh, work in the outback, in the um, um, sheep stations, cattle stations, um, who now believe that uh, it is climate change is, is with us. Is with us, yes. A and some of those who rely on their vote still live in the past. Yeah. Um, but it's usually people who, um, in many cases, people who um, live in the city who uh, but um, no, I think climate change is, is real. Is with us. Um, if you could join any past or current music group, which would it be? I'm, I'm assuming Michael Cashman likes music. I love music. I, I think music is a uh, great. It's tremendous. It's a gift stuff. of love, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> I remember once I was with my wife in Italy and um, we were upstairs uh, uh, in um, Flo outside of Florence, I think. Oh, beautiful. And um, uh, we could hear some music. The serenading going on. <laughs> the Italians were playing music. It is, uh, it is. It is beautiful. Oh, yeah. it's magnificent. And that was. They were school children. Yeah. Ah, yeah. They, yeah, they have beautiful voices. And have you ever done the gondola run? The who? The, uh, the, in Venice, the gondolas. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and how beautiful is the music on that? Oh. Yeah, I can't remember the music on it, but I, uh, um, no, I, I've it been is. there a few it's times. Amazing. So, so, yes, yeah, so what music group would it be if you had to choose, if you had to join any past or current group? Can you think of any group? <laughs> that's okay if you, if there's nothing that comes to mind that's fine no music group or uh, a musician perhaps not necessarily a group maybe just um, a person music group probably um No, I wouldn't be able to quickly grasp yeah. it, but um, I um, am very keen in listening to um, good music. Um, but I can't think of any no, particular... No, that's okay, that's okay. Um, I know from my parents' time, they used to be big fans of Louis Armstrong. Yeah, and, and uh, Hank Locklin, and who was the other one? Hank Snow, Hank Locklin. Oh yes, so just a few names that come to mind because I remember these two. I've, I've, I certainly have listened closely to uh, music groups from guys in America, one of whom I have forgotten his name. Um, a recent one, or from? Oh, he's a, he's a, you'd know the name, but I can't remember. Um, comes to Australia a little bit. Um, Not Jim Reeves, is it? Who? Jim Reeves? No. Nah, Not nah. him, okay. Uh, uh, he's still around. Uh, oh, he's still around. Willie Nelson? Who? Willie Nelson? No. Nah. Not him, okay. I can't remember the guy's name, but... Um, um, I, I, I think that music is a wonderful thing for us mm. to um, it is the language of love settle us song. down. If you were a ruler of your country, what would be the first law you'd introduce? Yes, yeah, so um, my problem there is that I'd have a heap of them. 
trade unions would be one. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh, believe that um, uh, that workers unions are vital if they don't stand up for themselves others will simply um, swallow them up um, yeah. do things that um, we might say tut 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 mm. but nothing mm. happens mm. Um, yeah. I, I think that workers should um, always be ready to um, stand with their friends with their current also their workers working friends um, it doesn't mean that they are wanting to take over the company or anything like that that's rubbish but it, it does mean that that they have the should have the opportunity to to help yeah they have to have a voice someone to yeah. represent them absolutely so what other rules would you think of and that they, they should unions? represent themselves that's true <laughs> um, certainly they should have good people to um, represent but they should have the right representation in some places they don't have that right mm. but they true. should have the right yeah I agree I agree any other rules that you can think of that you would love to introduce if you were the ruler of your own country? No taxes, perhaps? <laughs> no, no. Of course, we can say things like that, but... Um, it's not practical, obviously. Um, I think that um, when, when we are in a place where work is um, being undertaken by people from other countries as was the case in Sudan, South Sudan. Um, the Chinese are very um, effective in um, and the Japanese uh, in um, building things in taking over small countries, but it can also be a, one hell of a challenge for them. It can be disadvantages. Mm. I agree. Um, so we we need, in my view, um, for example, if uh, the Chinese or other um, people would say to our government, uh, we want to um, come in. Try to dictate to our government. Do yes. this, um, do this or do that. Um, and sometimes um, our, I was going to say monarchists, but our um, um, people who run our country might say, oh, that, that's, that's, that's money there. Um, um, sounds good. Sadly, that's what happens. It comes down to to ching. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you wonder where the money's going. Exactly. Yes. Some of it, but um, that's where we need to be very cautious, very mm. careful. But um, anyway, that's that's my, my, my yep. view. That's okay. What would you do if you won the lottery? I'm sure you'll go back to Italy once again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or perhaps move to Italy. Yeah, if, if we, we won the lottery, I uh, would um, feel as I am obliged to um, have some of that money filtered out to others um, 
not forgetting the vinis. Yeah, and um, I don't think it's something that if we were to win, win a considerable amount of money that we just hold, hold on to it, yes. And uh, it needs really to be... Uh, no, absolutely. I'm with you on that, 100%. Spread. It's always good to share. Yeah. You've yeah. got excess. So. My wife would be um, um, quite fearful of me... Um, just giving it all away. <laughs> if we came into... No, uh, I... There are some features of, of my life that are... I've not spoken of, um, but I um, am very keen on motor, motor cars. Um, I owned an MG for many years. Ah, okay. And I, so uh, she'll be too nervous that you might yeah, my, pursue that idea. My brother um, <laughs> uh, drove MGs and Jaguars and stuff. And So maybe it's time for Michael Cashman to have one too. So let's hope you win the lottery. <laughs> oh, I know what I do, but, uh, but she... Uh, but That's should a different be idea. Started, yeah. Would you rather ride a bike, a horse, or drive a car? I, I think you mentioned about, um, did you mention about having uh, ridden a bike? I think earlier on in the interview, uh, you made reference to it. I was a motorcycle. Oh, that's right. When you visited Melbourne, you said I you came I bikes. rode a motorcycle for, um, it was a magnificent bike. Um, it, might, it was a... Um, uh, called um, a BMW oh, um, by Reich, um, nice. Mutter and Werk, um, a magnificent bike, German bike. Okay, oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, but um, when when my wife was around, I, uh, still single, I, I uh, uh, felt, well, I really got to get a, a, um, a car. So these things happen. Yeah. But but obviously you, you would prefer to ride a bike if you had to choose between a bike, a horse and a car. Uh, I'm too old now. I'm too old to buy a True. motorcycle. True. But um, I um, oh, no, I'd, I'd be in a motor car. <laughs> in an MG. Okay. But it might be a different car than... My wife's full of this. She knows. Oh, yeah, be Who careful. knows? Maybe a Lamborghini. Who knows? A Ferrari. Oh, no, time no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're down to the last question. What would you change about yourself if you could? What would Michael Cashman like to change about himself? Yeah. Um... Changing about myself. Maybe you have nothing that you would want to change, but and that's fine too, but if there was something that you would like to change. Well, if you've assisted me there, I I, um, I don't have any desire to uh, You're very change. content the way you are. Mm. That's fantastic. And we, yeah, we love the way you are too. Recently, um, as we know, with the... Uh, um, disease or whatever we call it the covid the covid mm -hmm. disease um my wife and i had to be at home yes. in our home yeah, locked down yes in and isolation. Um, quite a number of our um, mm. so we have uh, 19 grandchildren and um, a number of them um, bought food for us and uh, we'd come in on a Saturday or a Sunday, and here we are, Granddad and Oh, that's Anna. so sweet. Uh, Nana would, she thought that was great. <laughs> She'd uh, uh, give a, a note to um, one of our daughters who would then sprinkle it out amongst the others. And um, uh, so my wife was very keen about that. But we've recently stopped doing that. Um, that's, so yeah, that's that, uh, what comes from having a, a beautiful and large family, six children, 19 grandchildren. That's fantastic. Yeah, we can't get to the 20 mark. <laughs> but you've got 19. That's that's a milestone. That's really great. Yeah, no, great. All right. So that brings us to the end of the interview and the end of the series of interviews that we've had. 
Uh, we hope, uh, parishioners, that you've enjoyed listening to the different stories and experiences uh, that have been shared with you. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Thank you so much for sharing all this wealth of information and experience with us. I'm sure our viewers have enjoyed listening to you. And uh, good luck with whatever it is that you're planning for St. Mary's in the next phase. You never know. Okay, I, I, um, I was certainly impressed with Italy. Uh, um, I, um, I can tell. There's like a twinkle in your eye every yes, time you've oh, talked yes. about Italy. <laughs> Italy, oh, yes. magnificent, magnificent. Um, when you when you say, "Well, Italy is great," but <laughs> then you say to someone, "Well, oh, Pakistan or um, uh, South Sudan," yeah. Yeah. entirely Quite different. A contrast there, Italy to uh, Sudan to Pakistan. Yes, that's a lot. To, yeah, a lot to take. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so stay well, parishioners, until we see you again. God bless. Bye for now. And I thank very much this young man here. Um, He's such a patient, accommodating guy, Fabio. Thank you so much, he? Fabio. Mario, is it? Fabio. 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 Great stuff. Great stuff. Yes. Thank you.